Ah, uh, yes, nothing quite like Buffalo in January as we welcome you inside a snowy Bills stadium on the shores of Lake Erie. The folks in Buffalo love their Bills, and a moment ago they entered to the delight of this sold-out crowd. They're set for football as their Bills will do battle with the Cleveland Browns. Buffalo set to get the football back here at their own 26-yard line. down Allen he's got the connection to Cole Beasley and yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard brings up a good safe pass there right off the bat that's almost a rhythm play that's what we like to call it get them into rhythm early something safe something they're confident about something they feel good and once that's completed then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates Looking to throw again on second down. Allen, and he'll get this underneath to Singletary. Six yards, the pick up, and that's a first down. That was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Allen now on first down. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-round pick, Kevin Johnson. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. First and 10 at their own 46-yard line. They'll run for the first time with Kareem Hunt. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield strike. Edmonds on the tackle. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. From midfield now on second down, Mayfield. His throw incomplete. The intended receiver was Rashard Higgins. But now it'll be third down. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. Mayfield now from the 50. That one is caught by Hunt. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. After getting that turnover on the first drive of the game, you'd hate to just stall out the momentum, go three and out. They're able to avoid that there. Yeah, we talk about complimentary football all the time, but I think it's a little bit deeper than that. Defense went out, forced a turnover, gave the ball to the offense. It's now the offense's responsibility to pay that off for them, to show respect to them. Hey, you guys got a turnover? We appreciate it. They want to continue their drive. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, the offer can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 24. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. down Mayfield this pass complete to Higgins and down inside the 15 he goes that's good for a Cleveland first down at 11 yard pickup really been an ideal start for them they get the turnover on the opening possession now here they are moving the ball straight down the field on their first drive and that feels good but you know on their side of the field all they're thinking is finish this drive off because they took it away, right? So now you've got them back on their heels a little bit. Now go down, put a touchdown on them. Look out. You've won the mental battle early 
in the game, and that may carry over for you. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Throwing Mayfield. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. The Buffalo defense does its job, and it's fourth down. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Now Cody Parkey out to try the field goal for the right hash, and this one just a chipping. The kick by Parkey is good, and the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. one off. Here's the all-pro returner from 2018, Andre Roberts. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side, because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs, they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away, but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. That one was intended for John Brown, but it's going to be second down. To throw again, Allen. Back to Brown, this time complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. He was brought down by Malcolm Smith there for the stop. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second and seven, Allen finding Knox there complete. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now, right at the 40. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Call it a gain of 14 for the second play in a row. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. And sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. 
two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. They'll try and run for this with Singletary. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. They'll give him a yard on the play. And the Bills will move the chains. We ought to come up with a T-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulder square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. On first down, they stick with Singletary. And he's going to get it inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Here's Singletary. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Four yards on the play. That's going to lead to first and goal. But well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. They'll look to run with Moss. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Buffalo. A three-yard touchdown run, and the Bills have taken the lead. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. Each guy has his own assignment that allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That's oh, a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On second and 11 now. Mayfield, open man is Higgins. And all the way down to the 35. Complete to Russia. A big play that time for Cleveland. 41 yards. That was awfully nice. Hit him in stride and off he went. It was almost like the ball hitting him was like him receiving a baton and he was running the anchor leg in a relay race. 
Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Working out of the gun, Mayfield, and finding the tight end, Hooper. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Throwing again on second down. Mayfield throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Rashard Higgins was the one he was looking for, and it's third and short. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. And he's got his man. That's Landry. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Mayfield on target to Landry for a Browns first down. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. He was looking for the Michigan Wolverine, Donovan Peoples-Jones. That'll bring up second down. It leads to second and ten. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Mayfield with it once more. Gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Oh, I came to my feet on that one. I thought he was getting close to breaking that one big. But in the end, give some credit to the defense, finding a way to get to him and forcing a third down. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Going to the air again with Mayfield. The Buffalo defense does its job, and it's fourth down. Well, it's been a tough go for him. This guy's been driving down the field, but defensively, once they got their backs to the goal line, turned up the pressure, that's going to lead to a fourth down. Well played. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. 28-yard attempt. And Parkey's kick is good. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. out to the 25. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And they had the touchdown during the last drive, and I'm guessing that you like the balance they had on that last drive. And I loved it. Forget liking it. Absolutely love what they were doing because to be ahead of the defense that much where every play call you have, run or pass, is working pretty well for you. Makes you look like a genius. It really does. It also lets you know that your preparation was pretty good, and now the defense has to do all the adjusting. And from the 25, they worked this to the 29, a gain of four. Richardson on the stop. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, 
you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Now a throw here on second down, and that's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game at Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. From the 45 on second down, Allen, short throw hauled in by Croft, and he'll get it down to the 47 here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That's a staple of this offense, drag round to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 47. Now Allen. It's Knox, the tight end, making the catch. Not much there, only a yard. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And his throw is incomplete. Tyler Croft, the tight end, the one he was looking for. And it's third down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Again, they'll throw with Allen. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Sheldon Richardson with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. Jones. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. And after the field goal last time, see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Four yards. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? On pass the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. Down at the 26. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Browns on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb, and he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. He's calling a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield, and it's caught over the middle. Hooper. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Good work after the catch. Gets him 15 and a first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. 
and puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he is down at the 48. A pickup of four that started at 148-yard line and ended at the other. At the Bills' 48-yard line. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Mayfield off the play fake. Out to his left. He's going to take off with it. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Mayfield on first down, and his throw's going to be incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. From the gun, Mayfield. He's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield strike. Quentin Jefferson gets him for a loss of eight. What great push up front. Enough to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And Old Murray is a very, very fickle man. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And he completes it to Hunt. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. Andre Roberts is deep for Buffalo. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Buffalo set to get the football back here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. Brings up second and 10 at the 22-yard line. They will run with Singletary. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. The Bills send the punter out as he'll kick it away for the second time. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Browns will take over first and 10. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Now they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns, you know? A big seam, and he might go all the way. And all the way in. Touchdown. 
down, Cleveland. Nick Chubb, 75 yards. And once again, the Browns are back in front. And we didn't even get a chance to settle in for that drive. A quick strike of 75 yards, and they find the end zone. Don't you get the sense that film study was behind this one, that they saw something that they thought they could take advantage of? The key is calling it in the right situation. Knowing when it exists to go to it, they did exactly that. They've got to feel really good about what they did in advance of this game. Just looking down at the sideline now, their defense is like, man, can you have strung that out just a few <laughs> plays? Give us a break. Back out there. Hey, man, give that water break and get on out there and play. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. This taken in about four yards deep. And Roberts choosing not to bring this one out. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. The pass to Brown as he holds it in. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag. Because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. On the ground, it's Singletary. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Allen's throw is complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 10 yards, good enough for a Buffalo first down. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. First down. Works right side into the hands of the tight end, Knox. And he is down at the 48. A pickup of four that started at 148 yard line and ended at the other. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Yard line. Now the Bills will hustle to the line. To throw again on second down. Allen. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. At that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Rolling to his right. Over the middle here to Brown. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. John Brown of 39 yards. And the Bills are an extra point away from taking the lead. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rap, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. Extra point right down the middle. And that will give him the lead here as we get on towards halftime.
After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Now Donovan Peoples-Jones. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. And they hit the home run last drive. One play on the ground all the way to the house. Now the defense, maybe they're expecting a run here. Partner, I love your description because when we talk about hitting the home run, we're usually thinking about a passing play, aren't we? Something in the air, deep ball. But how about them just taking it? Big time jaunt. Now if you're coming back out, now they've established this run game, the play action pass could very well be open. Bring it. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. the shotgun it's Mayfield he'll get this one underneath to Hunt and he is tackled inside the 40 not Mayfield quite to the 35 complete, 11 more yards that go around a first down as well well so far little to no resistance by the defense on this drive alone three passes three completions three first downs they're taking it to him and it's paying off line of scrimmage the 37 on first and 10 into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Tredavious White with a pick. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. The Bills take over first and... Well, they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. 13-yard line. A three-yard pickup. Brings up second and seven. So a very tight first half. We had to break in a one-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Fielded near the back of the end zone, and the half will begin with a touchback. The Browns drive about to get started. And in enemy territory last time through the interception. We'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. Now the second down throw on target. And he'll be brought down shot of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. On first and 10, Mayfield. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Mayfield's Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Yards on the pickup. It's second and inches at their 48-yard line. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb, and he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are. Stay with who you know. 
and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Chubb with the first down. Carry is he'll get about three out of it. And they get second and seven coming up. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. On second and seven, Mayfield looking middle, and it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. On third down, Mayfield. And he's got his man on the crossing route. That's Landry. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Then we got to give a little tip of the cap for the defense there. Zone coverage, locked it in tight, made it really difficult because they tried the crossing route against it, and it worked for a completion, but you have to know where the sticks are on third down. Didn't get beyond them. No pickup. A fourth and short, had your offense out there, that one stings. And you know something? Your options change dramatically. Not only is it tougher to go for it, but what if you decided just to line up and try and draw them off sides? If you did it on fourth and short, you could pick up the cheap first down. Now, you still won't get a first down, even if you do exactly the same thing. And here's Gillen on now to punt as he gets this one away. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. So here's the Bills offense. Now they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Throwing again. Allen finding Knox there, complete. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. It's a first down on a gain of 10. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Here's Allen on first and 10. And he's going to keep it here. First down and more for Allen. And all the way up to the 46. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. This is a draw play. Allen gives to Singletary. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Singletary again. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Brown's territory. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. And able to find John Brown. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. 
make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Finding his way down to about the 35-yard line. He was brought down by Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. They go right back to Singletary. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at the Browns' 29. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Allen looks to throw on third and one. And that's caught by Beasley. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 14 yards through the air. Caught the D off guard on third and one. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. The tackle made. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. They'll keep it on the ground. Singletary. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. Throwing his Allen on third. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Sheldon Richardson picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big. But sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz call and you still cover the screen that allows your blitzers to get there so they get three certainly hoping for six after a 13 play drop so you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job right if they go 13 plays you only give up a field goal you did a nice job there but here's the other part 13 plays you don't force any mistakes you don't take the ball away maybe that's the way they should look at it to the field goal. Here's Bass to kick it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And the Bills are going to get him as he goes down. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Third and 12. Mayfield in this Browns offense staring at a third and long now after the sack. 
Working out of the gun, Mayfield, and finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. To return is Roberts. That will go as a punt of 42, 7 on the return. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. The Bills ready to take over. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. To throw again. Allen stepping up. He's going to keep it. Josh Allen, very athletic at 6'5", showing the versatility, picking up the first on the scramble. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at the 45. Following the interception, Mayfield. A quick throw here, that's complete. Complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Looking to throw again on second down. Mayfield firing quickly here, and that's complete. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. A first down throw for Mayfield. Buying time to his left. And down to the 20, he'll go before heading out of bounds. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter, picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. On second down and four, Mayfield. Eluding the pressure right, and he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Four yards there as they let him out of the pocket, and he got enough for the first. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but 
It's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Now second and five. Snap will come from the six. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Mayfield's pass. Kaderil Hodge there to make the grab. And the Browns have retaken the lead. And that's exactly what you're supposed to do with good field position. You make the other side pay when you don't have far to go for the score. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. Makes the score Browns 20, Bills 17. Cody. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. And this carries into the end zone. And Roberts choosing not to bring this one out. Buffalo set to get the football back here. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll set up to throw. It's Knox, the tight end, making the catch. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Throwing on first down is Allen. And his pass incomplete. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Incomplete. It's now second and ten. Here now is second and ten again from the 41. Throwing again. Allen. And Beasley with it over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 yards there, first down. You always worry about those small receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. On first down, Allen. Working the middle here, that's complete to Knox, the tight end. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. The interception last drive, there he hits the reliable target. Throwing again on second down. Allen, and he'll get this underneath to Singletary. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 29-yard line. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Then 10 at the 29-yard line. Allen on first down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. 
And so far on this drive, so good. They moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively, but they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Now Allen again. He's going to take off with it. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. And that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. From the five, here's second and two. From the gun, it's Allen. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Out routes are always timing routes, and if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second, because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. Now at third and two, they're going to elect to throw with Allen. This will be caught at about the five. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. A 21-yard attempt. The kick by Bass is good. And the Bills have tied the game here in the fourth. Well, you talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, trying to win the tournament going down the stretch. for what's been a tight ball game. We're all even at 20 now as the kick's away. Peoples-Jones returning. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and ten. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. He takes us from the 30 to the 34. 24, Nick Chubb. With that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. Second and six. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. And again, it's Chubb. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The Browns on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This time it's third and three. From the gun, Mayfield. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. 
He'll look to throw right away. A quick throw going to be caught by Diggs. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now this one to his running back out of the backfield. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. They'll run here with Singletary. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Seven yards there and a first down. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 46. Now a run with Singletary. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. The ball carrier. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. Flush to his right. And now he's going to use his legs. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. The escapability in evidence there as that one good for 15 and a first. Normally we're talking about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this with both of these guys running the ball well? Yeah, they mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Allen again here on second and ten. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver, and it's third down. And that throw behind his man, he missed him, incomplete. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And he's able to find Diggs. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Allen to Diggs there for a Buffalo first. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Gavin guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Singletary here running out of the gun. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. Singletary. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Allen 
going to give this one to Singletary. And they'll hustle up to stop him well shy of the first, right around the 15. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. Bit of a pressure spot here for Tyler Bass. A 32-yard attempt. The kick by Bass is good. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Big kick right there to give him the lead in the fourth, but there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post-game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they scored too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. through the field goal. Here's Bass to kick it away. Peoples-Jones returning. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Now Mayfield and the Browns. Down 23-20. Under a minute 20 to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Here's Mayfield. He'll get this one underneath to Hunt. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got to hustle. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it, but they've got to continue to move quickly. First down now, but that clock rolling. Back to throw. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. He was trying to get it to Kadero Hodge, but it'll be second down. We've seen that the deep ball has been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. He'll look to throw. Gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. They'll look to throw. Now Mayfield lost the football. The pass. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Mayfield to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So the defense helping him out a little bit here late in the fourth. Yeah, and you're exactly right. And when you're the one doing the chasing, you'll take a little help from the other guys, won't you? So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This to potentially send us to overtime. And here come the whistles and a timeout with seven seconds left.
So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This to potentially send us to overtime. And this one is right through. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And we need overtime to decide this one after four quarters of play. We're all even. The extra session in a moment. This is the NFL on EA Sports. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Not a bad idea to start overtime, feed the hot hand. And understand that when you're feeding that hot hand, everyone else is pretty much in agreement on it. You know, a team looks at their game and says, all right, who's playing really well? Let them touch the football, and we'll do our job to help them along. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jordan Poyer. And it's a good return here as he'll get all the way up close to the 35. Maybe. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. But they turned it back over to him, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? And part one is done. Now part two. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. What can Allen do now with his drive? He hits Beasley right side. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Throwing his Allen on third. Going deep for Diggs. And that is going to be pulled in one-handed. Wow. A huge play there in overtime. 53 yards. Well, it's one thing to grab it with one hand, but when you make a catch of that distance, quite another. Yes, sir. I mean, that one right there, we keep talking about 
the high flying antics that we're seeing from receivers nowadays doesn't matter what spot they start in but when it actually does happen in the heat of battle brings me right out of my seat and running room hard to come by here he gets it down to the eighth they had the huge play last time here it is a much smaller gain of two and that carry probably not so much for yardage just to get the spot that you want to kick the field goal and any yardage you gain there is really kind of gravy and this just becomes what my old coach used to say get into position to be in position and that's what they want the right spot for their kicker to line up the field goal and he is gonna go down back at the 11 yard line Sheldon Richardson giving him once again his third sack of the afternoon. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. So after the sack, Allen and the Bills with work to do on third and long. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. And the pressure gets to him again. Larry Ogunjobi in for the sack. And it appears to me that someone's defensive coordinator is jockeying for a raise. A sack on second and goal, a sack on third and goal, now brings up a decision on fourth down. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. And now the Browns are going to take another timeout. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. A 29-yard attempt. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. We thought this game would be a good one. It did not disappoint into overtime, and it took the field goal to win it. And we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense. And usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics, right? But in this case, they got the ball back on defense, gave themselves a chance, and they capitalized on it with a victory. And I don't care what distance that field goal is from in overtime. The knees are always knocking, <laughs> but he pushed it through. Not only that, think about your snapper, your holder. A lot of nerves for them, too, because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from Buffalo.